Hi, this is Wes Simpson with another edition of the Summer Session on Media Over IP, brought to you by Ames and the VSX. With me today is Steve Dargham. He's responsible for special events for Telstra Broadcast Services. And he's going to be talking about international remote production using ST2110. Welcome, Steve. Uh, thank you, Wes, and uh, thank you. Uh, good to be with you. Um, so glad you could join us today. today. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's better than talking about uh, our experiences and the international remote production and the challenges we have okay, in, in the field? Well, I'm looking forward to this, so let, let's, uh, let's dive in. Thank you. Excellent. Look, uh, t today, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it uh, on a practical level, um, you know, with, with more technical. Uh, I'm going to state the challenges that we, we had how we overcame those challenges with the support from the standard at SMT. So I start with basically the basics. We, we all need connectivity, and those connectivity allow us to do uh, things in the media and the broadcast industry. Uh, traditionally, we used to use um, PDH and SDH services, but those are restricted, uh, clunky, um, not flexible. Um, 2001, 2003, um, the RTU along with uh, standard bodies came in with a new paradigm, a, an evolution network, and that's the optical transport network networks. Um, and the optical transport networks allowed more flexibility, allow us to scale up, and it more converge over a, 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 a packet core network, which is friendly to IP. Uh, everyone today is converging to, to IP, and it's been agreed that the future is with the IP. So the OTN allows us to do um, uh, various things, um, uh, remove some of the challenges we had in, in previous technology, uh, allowed transparency, allowed scale, uh, and enabled us to do things that was not possible in previous technologies. Um, um, the, the OTN is backward compatible, uh, and in today's uh, telecommunication is actually 90% um, uh, of the networkings today is moving towards OTN. And because of that, it allows uh, much, much better flexibility. Essentially, the OTN, its uh, success, its, its simplicity. Um, it takes a payload, it adds its overhead, uh, or overhead to it, package it for a transport, and send it over uh, the other end. However, in, in those packagings, it allow mechanism for the good stuff from the previous technology, such as protection, allow a new, um, um, a new feature, such as inbuilt security mechanism and encryption, but also allowed a new feature, such as scale, um, higher bandwidth, which were impossible in previous technology. It, it, it wasn't practical. And, and of course, uh, the most important thing in my view is it reduced the cost and allow simplicity in, 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 tele in, in international telecommunication network, in particular our subsea cables and terrestrial networks. Um, and that's why today, most of international remote production networks, we use the base, which is the OTN, uh, networking internationally, and it it, it allows us to do all those good th things, uh, enable remote production. Um, from the client signal, of course, there's a, a, a number of stages to do uh, to pack package the client signals from various sources. Uh, and I mean by various sources, it could be video, it could be Ethernet, it could be uh, storage or SAN. Uh, it could be traditional, um, you know, legacy service such as SDH or PDH and ATM and frame relay. It's all packaging and a, a payload, payload um, optical pay, payload unit where it would allow the mapping into, uh, into the payload of the OTN. Then um, another layer to the multiplexing and the fun multiplexing is you package it for suitable for transport. The code of the OTN, essentially you're using the photonics, basically putting uh, uh, the core as a packet DWDM, but with the flexibility of a fully managed end-to-end -end network. And that's why, uh, um, you know, it, it's, it's, its simplicity is uh, removed all the complexities traditionally with uh, higher order and lower order multiplexing in order to extract the signal. No, you have a signal, you put overhead and you send it to the other end. 
the other end. You don't need to step down or step up, which is traditionally in 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 uh, uh, SDH and PDH technology. Uh, it's it's complexity. You need a, a huge bank of equipment uh, to extract a signal. With the OTN, that's much much easier. Um, the, the other important factor is uh, is all those technology can fit in in a payload in the OTN. And you can see from the slide, we're interested in the bottom, which is the video from the DVB ASI, uh, STI, uh, the HD STI, uh, 3G, and 4K. And all of those actually fit neatly if you follow the arrow to the top from the, uh, let's say, the 3G SDI or the HD SDI, it fit neatly in one of the payload, designated uh, OTN payload. So you're not doing any complex, um, you know, multiplexing of payload or uh, fragmentation or reassembly. Uh, th this is much, much more simplified. And that's why uh, it actually made a significant improvement into some of the fee factors that contributed to the success of, uh, of international remote production, such as, uh, and that's inherited in, in the OTN, Logita, low delay, faster switching, scalability. And that's made it easier for us in the broadcast industry to, to do what we wanted to do. So um, this is the basic about the OTN, which we, we, we all enjoy today. However, in order to do uh, international remote production, we did, we did have challenges. Uh, and the challenges were many on both sides, of course, the telecom industry and the broadcast industry. Uh, some of the challenges that uh, I mentioned, which is extremely important when you do international remote production, let's say between uh, Japan and, and the UK or Australia and the UK, is a huge distance as we're talking about 20 southern kilometers of subsea cable fiber. So this is a delay, which is for live international remote production is a no-no. You need, you know, you need actually to have a lowest delay possible. The second important factor is everyone converging to IP. When you use packet network, GitHub becomes extremely important, especially if you want to use IP in the broadcast industry, in particular the SMPTE uh, 2110, SMPTE 2022, and the family of SMPTE standards. Extremely important. GitHub, extremely important. And the last one, in my view, uh, of, of the family of challenges for international remote production is you need suitable capacity. You need the scale. And uh, both OTN as an under underlying technology and the suite of SIMTI standard, in particular 2110 and 20-22 that came with SIMTI now, made it feasible. It allowed us to do things was not possible before. And some of this, I mentioned the SIMTI 2110 and the SIMTI 20. Uh, dash 22. It allow us, uh, coupled with, of course, the LTN, it allow us to 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 do in reality international remote production with quality, uh, as if you are next to the stadium or the camera actually in the stadium. However, uh, of course, in reality, possibly the camera could be in the stadium and the control people and everyone actually miles away or southern of miles away from the stadium. So. The family of standards, SMPTE 2110, SMPTE 20-22, and the OTN removed those barriers and challenges uh, inherited in all technology. It allows us now to do real-time international live production. An event in Japan, for example, which I'll show towards the end, an example of what we've done recently, and, and the production team in, 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 in the UK or in the US. With the SMPTE, and there's a family of them, uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, the, the key one, 20-22, uh, it allow basically um, a, a, a error-free, or at least reasonable error-free with the forward error correction uh, of our IP network. The SMPTE uh, 2110 allow, um, you know, Un in, in particular for the uncompressed uh, HD SDR to fit in audio and video discreetly into uh, an IP uh, payload or IP transmission medium enabled us to do this. 
Uh, another, of, of course, of the uh, SIMTI standard is it considered how we could do, what we could do, uh, a mechanism for timing. Uh, um, uh, for example, uh, PCM audio, address uh, ancillary data, uh, address AES, um, integration with other, um, for example, um, payloads such as, you know, ancillary data. While the SIMTI 20 dash 22, of course, allow uh, a similar mechanism over IP, it also allow a mechanism for recovery, um, at least switching to some degree, um, uh, enabled hybrid trade over IP. So both of them, uh, a group, uh, a family of standard that when used uh, along with RTN, it becomes reality. We no longer have those challenges that no, no, it's impossible to do international remote production um, between countries uh, globally. Um, these challenges now become uh, things of the past. And now, uh, as we know, we in a um, pandemic era, um, less uh, you know travel. Uh, we need so those sort of technology to have minimal uh, staff on the ground, uh, production, for example, in a bubble uh, in a completely different country uh, and produce a high quality event without the need to bring in tons of equipment, uh, um, um, thousands of people uh, to one location. Of course, we all been locked down today. Uh, so the international remote production is now a reality, thanks to the group of SIMT standard, uh, thanks to the development in the optical transport network that allow us to do this today. Um, these are the uh, thing base, uh, the, the, the basic ingredient that resolve the challenges. Uh, however, in order to come up with a, a balanced way to do international room production, uh, I call it in, in reality, from experience, what we do when we talk to, uh, to customers, there's many factors, and I call it the balancing act. It's a dance between uh, quality, i.e. you want to high, produce high vent as if you were in the, in the ground, uh, latency and bandwidth. Now, of course, all of those factors contribute to cost. At the end of the day, uh, we need to reduce cost uh, in order to show there's a benefit. Apart from the reduction of cost, of course, which all those three factors play, there is significant contribution to greenhouse emission reduction. And that's extremely important. Uh, travel contributes significantly to greenhouse emission. Now, the latency, or well, back to the latency, the bandwidth, and, and 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 the quality of what you are producing. So, if you want top quality, you know, the codec need to perform more uh, calculation, more processing. Um, but that's slow down the, uh, the 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 protest down. So it increases the latency. So we need to choose the appropriate codec suitable for the job. And I'm going to go in, in the next slide in a few options for those codecs. Second thing, if you want to focus on quality, of course you want to do uncompressed. But that means you need more bandwidth. Uh, and when you want more bandwidth, uh, that means the cost will increase. And the third thing is, if let's say, um, 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 if let's say you want to uh, 12 HD SDI uh, over 10 gig link. Um, you still some need room for audio and video to stream. So you may need to consider um, a compression mechanism that allow you to balance this act between quality, latency, and bandwidth, which impact, of course, the cost in, in doing international remote production. So this balance act, extremely important. It comes with experience. It's something that uh, many international uh, customers and broadcasters now going through it, along with their partners in the telco industry. They're going through that. If you don't have the experience to come up with this balance formula, um, you know you need to try and try again to come up with the best outcome. Um, from our experiences, there is a careful choice. Uh, uh, the choice of codec. Uh, play important part uh, uh, on the quality, uh, 
of course, the cost of a solution, um, and of course, the latency. So, um, latency, bandwidth, and quality. The choice of codec: Tico, VC2, J2K, uh, JPEG XS, Hatch J2K. Um, there's a lot of those codecs that I'm throwing. Some of them are proprietary, i.e., need pay license. Some are royalty free, you don't pay, pay a license. Um, some uh, are more efficient than the others. Some uh, have a higher uh, uh, quality, a studio like quality if you use it. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's a trade off between quality, um, you know, bandwidth, uh, and of course, uh, the choice um, um, and latency and the choice of quality. Um, if you want top quality, of course, uh, you go, uh, um, you do uncompressed, but that's increased the, 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 uh, the cost. Um, if you want to focus on, um, um, uh, you know, on, on um, uh, better uh, balanced outcome, you may choose um, a, a codec with a better efficient uh, encoding latency. So these are the uh, factors that you need to determine um, what is best for the solution? What is best for the event? Uh, the number of cameras at the at the at the stadium. You end up sooner or later. You end up with a choice of codec that suits what you want. It suits uh, the, um, the 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 production team. It suits the customer. At the same time, um, it suits the budget, and um, it become uh, a, a solution. Um, you need to go through this at some stage. So uh, on this slide, what you can see in here, uh, I put to some degree, uh, and that's relatively uh, correct. And of course, there's more development on those compression. Some of them not ratified yet, but we all know the J2K, very, very popular, uh, well established. It's not new. Uh, however, latency on it, the J2K in particular, uh, is 80 millisecond, but it's actually do you can actually with you know as low as 120 meg for you know for band, of bandwidth for one HD SDR, you can actually stick in more than 30 odd um, uh, cameras into a 10, 10 gig or less um, uh, link, and you still have room for other um, things you that you want to do with it, communication, two ways comms, etc. Um, J2K is well understood. It has a good compression ratio. Uh, quality is a studio like quality, um, but it's it's Achilles here's it's a delay. But on the other hand, uh, it's very well understood, uh, and I can state for the Rugby World Cup that's recently done in Japan in a remote production like um, networks, uh, J2K were used because of stability, of course. Um, and, and, and the like. Uh, it's royalty free, you don't pay for a license, and of course, it's an open standard. Uh, let's take VC2, for example. VC2 used for the uh, uh, the real live uh, IAAF, uh, IAAF uh, um, um, event from Yokohama, Japan, just recently, in, in, as well in, in, in May 2019. Uh, and VC2 um, it's got it's got superior uh, delay. Uh, it's got a, a you know a very you know relatively moderate compression ratio. You need more bandwidth, of course. Uh, however, it, you need to pay for licenses, but it's an open standard. Uh, but its delay is superior. And for the uh, Japan RWF uh, to 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 Australia, that was done or thirty odd camera, uh, you know. Uh, used uh, VC2 uh, compression uh, with a two millisecond uh, delay, uh, and you add sixty odd uh, millisecond between uh, between the event where it's occurring and the remote international remote production hub, which is in Sydney. Uh, it's a reality. Two millisecond is actually a very very good. Uh, delay for the codec. Uh, Tico, on the other hand, some people prefer Tico. Again, um, um, the, the issue of this as well, it's not backward compatible. Um, license is uh, it's lower, if, you know, it, you have to pay for it. Um, you, you know, uh, Tico, however, compared to VC2, is proprietary. 
We come to a new one, it's in development, it's HTJ2K. Again, it's got a superior compression, conserved bandwidth, a higher quality, same production quality, a superior you know, uh, latency uh, to millisecond, uh, but also as well, it's compatible with the very popular J2K, where everyone likes because of stability, uh, license free, it's license free and open standard. So I think it's more becoming people will, uh, or at least the industry understand that maybe they will adopt something that really work for them. And actually, it's a uh, referring back to the balance act, the triangle is, is actually fit well in this balance act because it can serve bandwidth. Uh, and the last one, uh, very popular, some major. Uh, Media industry uh, outlets adopted it as their future uh, roadmap is J2, uh, J2 access. Um, again, it's a first stage or first generation, second generation of manufacturer now producing J, JPEG uh, access. Uh, it's got a good two millisecond latency uh, when it do the compression, six to one compression, maximum compression ratio, which is relatively good. Of course, high studio like quality um, output that through the compression process. Um, however, it's not backward compatible. It, uh, it's not a, a license a royalty free, you know, and it's proprietary. So you have to pay for it to the neck, which means it's going to increase the cost and, uh, when doing international production. Our aim is, again, produce best event, high quality event, reduce cost, uh, reduce impact on the environment, and a lot of things to happen uh, in a scenario we are living today. Um, uh, this slot, you could see the uh, the, the uh, uh, outline the previous uh, slide in details. Uh, of course, uh, uncompressed, everyone love uncompressed, but if you're in the same location, that's perfect. Uh, but when you go between countries, it's gonna, if you want to do uncompressed, it's going to cost you money. It's it, it going to cost more than, um, uh, you know, uh, ordering a tangy. You need multiple of them. Uh, it's not feasible. It's not a reality. It, 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 defeat, it, it actually, a formula will not work for broadcasters, um, you know, because they have a limited budget. Tiny Tico, they call it, J2XS, which now or VC2. These are the choice uh, of, um, of of codec that you could use. Uh, J2, uh, HD J2K is not yet because it's not there. I haven't seen manufacturer now producing um, this codec. I haven't played yet with it. But um, initial results from lab testing and the theoretical uh, calculation, it's actually very, very promising. So we'll wait uh, until we see um, the first version of it, of course. Um, um, we'll go to the next slide. Um, and as, as uh, we can see is and he uh, I put um, a very very important uh, slide about um, latency uh, between um, uh, international location this is measured uh, this is of a packet core uh, OTN uh, network uh, between different uh, locations uh, so let's say for example talk to London uh, and we Going via, of course, the Indian Ocean, um, um, West Band, a uh, RAM trip delay is 281 milliseconds. To be honest, that's actually, uh, you know, uh, not, not, not the best in my view. But again, uh, the cable system I mentioned here is um, uh, EAC, uh, CMUE5 cable system, which all go through uh, the Suez Canal, uh, Asia via Europe via, of course, uh, the Middle East and the Suez Canal. Uh, and of course, we have a back hole uh, in Europe. Uh, halfway, you divide this by two, you end up, of course, uh, um, uh, one way delay. I mean, you end up with a one delay for video because in the telco industry, it's reported round trip delay. Of course, in the media and broadcast industry, we need the one way delay because that's what we need to do our calculation on. Uh, however, if you choose, for example, a more superior, the delay will be much, much better, 223 round trip delay, significant improvement. Thanks to the new routes, OTN, it make it more reality. And as you can see, there's, of course, for the IAAF, the best route between Japan, Tokyo, Japan, from Yokohama to uh, uh, Sydney, uh, uh, remote production hub, 
round trip delay of 118.398 milliseconds. That's why I say measured because we actually measured that. Uh, one way you divide it, you'll end up like 59 point millisecond one way. You add uh, the VC2 um, compression delay, two milliseconds, um, uh, other delay by um, um, you know adj uh, adjoining equipment. Uh, international remote production is as if you are on site in Yokohama uh, and that was done. There's no um, smoke, there's no mirrors, uh, there's no um, fallback plans to, you know, oh yeah, we'll, we'll have stuff on the ground to do that. No, it was done 100% uh, international remote production. The reason we've done it is uh, we could and those challenges that I spoke about it earlier it's things of the past is 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 uh, you know um, still in some sectors of the industry they 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 still have oh well look i can't do remote production uh, because it's extremely uh, the bandwidth costs uh, very very high um, uh, it's not going to be good quality and the delay is 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 too high uh, that's not the case anymore um, more telcos now become uh, broadcast um, um, uh, services provider as well. So the commodity of capacity have a different paradigm in cost in it, um, rather than committed to long term, for example, contract, you're doing short term, similar to satellite uh, per week or per, uh, per, per, per hour. So it become more reality uh, in doing international remote production. Um, again, this is one of the in extremely important uh, uh, to the success of uh, international remote production. And that's why I have dedicated slides for it, is Jitter and Wanda. You want the lowest possible Jitter and Wanda when you do international remote production. So when you actually work with a customer from experience, you need to, um, um, when you sit down and, and put it this way, consider the connectivity, you need to measure all of those because at the end of the day, if you don't calculate and measure measure uh, the uh, d delay variation uh, when you turn in the camera on and you have international remote production. Either you have a success or you look where is my disaster recovery. So careful attention need to be taken to measure the the jitter, uh, especially in particular when we have a core packet network packets at the destination, especially when we use IP the safety family of standard, the OTN, they may arrive out of order, you know. So you need to make sure that the, the cool transmission, the pure, what I call it, the plumbing, have the lowest jitter or measured jitter possible. Um, in theory, for example, between uh, UK and Japan for the Rugby World Cup, we have 0 0.0002 uh, nanosecond. And that's extremely low jitter for an OTN network. And that allows us to do things that we couldn't do in the past. Um, and that's extremely important for international remote production network. Again, um, what you see here is the example we've done. Before the Rugby World Cup, um, we teamed up with, um, if I can mention the company, Telstra and Grass Valley teamed up along with IMG. And we put um, um, a 10 gig service uh, on uh, on the uh, America Asia Europe uh, cable, uh, along with uh, connectivity to Japan uh, on the AAC or CTC cable, uh, we connected basically Tokyo to London, IMG in London. We had an OT pure OTN connectivity. The delay on it was 223.6 millisecond round trip delay. Uh, Jitter is less than 0 0.002 um, um, microseconds. I think yeah, microseconds, um, and uh, we uh, Grass Valley had a camera in Telstra point of presence, two cameras in Telstra point of presence in Tokyo. Uh, the camera control unit uh, with their proprietary RP connectivity control mechanism protocol from Grass Valley, they controlled everything out of uh, UK. Um, the feedback from the users, the people who produce, or you know, directors and etc., uh, as if they're in the stadium. So that's basically you need those people to feel, look and feel exactly the same as if they are in the, in, in the ground. And that's actually gave us a, a, a positive that the core basic network is uh, 
tops, some thumbs up for connectivity. Of course, we took care of the pricing, so it's 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 um, you know reasonable. Um, we've reduced this cost, as a matter of fact. But at the end of the day, the, 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 the output, the product that we produce, higher quality, more feeds, uh, of course, less travel, um, um, more people involved, of course, you, you know, but they enjoy what they're doing. It's something that is breakthrough, 20,000 kilometers across the globe. Uh, and if you can go to the next slide, you see the, the actual, uh, um, you know, connectivity in details for this. Um, Two cameras in the office, the XE, you know, the XEU in, in, in London, and 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 they used it for a week, and they, I mean, everyone they tried to break it, <laughs> it didn't break. <laughs> uh, so we, we, they, I mean, intentionally we tried to break it, and because that's the things you need to go through when you have in a real life scenario, you you, you need to face the uh, the uh, unknown. Uh, and we try to, you know, simulate um, uh, breakage and outage, but thanks to the SIMT, uh, uh, a group of standard uh, uh, for rugby world cup, we've done headless switching, um, which is reasonably very done very well. We didn't add uh, extra delay in doing it, thanks to again the efficient uh, uh, group of SIMT 21, um, 20 22 and. and and, and 2110 standards would, you know, pick and choose the, su the most suitable for us and adopted it, um, and it become reality. Uh, another uh, real life, this is a real one uh, scenario is, of course, the uh, International Athletic Federation event in Yokohama, Japan, again in 2019. This one is that's it. The the production team, of course, we're in Sydney. Um, the Andrews Hub, and that's where an AP produce most of um, uh, sports for uh, a number of customers in Australia, Fox Sports, Foxtel, and the major media players. Everything from remote production, using remote production within Australia, of course. Um, um, in this case, what the, we, we had two 10 gig uh, services, completely diverse, Australia, Japan, of course, we had to do diversity. So, with in the, the the first stages in designing and choosing the suitable cable, of course, we need to look. Remember, um, latency, cost of capacity, because capacity costs differently depend on the cable choice. There's premium cable, there's less premium cables. So, we worked on this formula, and we come up with a good balance for higher quality, uh, lower latency. Uh, uh, and higher quality, and of course, reliability. So, we've chosen two routes. That's part of the design and, and the and the full and the process that you need to go through with customers. So, we've chosen two cable, Australia Japan cable, and again, 118.1 millisecond round trip delay. So, that's our primary route. But just in case, just in case. Uh, someone fish the cable or this cable break or we have a terrestrial problem within Japan, for example, we do have another route. Now, of course, the second route is because of the diversity uh, choice is more. But however, thanks to the SIMT standard, actually we've done all the testing and even switching between Route A and Route B, there were no impact, significant impact on the remote production, still function okay, still function as if everyone, the production crew, the, the trucks, the you know, name it, um, directors, they were on the ground producing the event. And in this case, we had 30 odd uh, cameras, some of them, uh, uh, high most of them, of course, high definition. Some of them is unique cameras, um, uh, name it graphics, uh, you know. And that's actually um, half an hour before I started my uh, um, talking about uh, international production. Uh, in the past, this is impossible. It kind of cost us too much. The delay going to be horrendous. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, uh, you're not going to get 10 gig services uh, that easily because the 10 gig is a huge. These days, 10 gig is like uh, uh, 100 meg of the past. You can, um, that, that's a basic thing. You get 10 gig services. Again, um, the reason I mentioned is capacity as a commodity. We have more competition. We have 
more telecommunication companies embracing uh, uh, video and providing services. As a matter of fact, the OTN itself, you can actually plug, plug in an ASR service directly into the OTN and transport the payloads from one end to the other without any professional broadcast media equipment. And you have the best delay, you'll have protection on it, you have encryption on it. So the cost is less. Telcos now have who adopted OTN have have less operational cost, and the benefits will flow to the media and broadcasters. At the same time, thanks to the Simti 2110, Simti 20-22, the challenge, the remaining technical challenge, that's the delay and and, and uh, you know played an important factor to, to the, for Jita and Wanda, um, it's no longer there. We've resolved all of them. And the remaining challenge is to convince, uh, of course, uh, um, um, media outlet broadcasters that this is a reality. You could do that. You can reduce costs. We can reduce carbon footprint. If it's one reason that allows us to, to, to do that, I think will benefit the future generation. And I think international world production will be a future way of doing things for last world events. Well, thank you very much, Steve. That was uh, interesting. I, I'm i uh, impressed by those uh, very precise uh, round-trip delay measurements. Boy, that, that's really a, a big factor. And it's funny how two milliseconds on a codec just doesn't make that big a difference, does it? <laughs> well, look, to be honest, uh, I mean, uh, uh, when you put all together, of course, every millisecond count. And, uh, sure. Uh, and, and, and I think, uh, and this count more in the financial and the frequency trading, uh, every millisecond is the difference between trillions and billions when you do mm -hmm. financial trading. Now, uh, luckily, we, we, we don't do this in the media industry, uh, but it's extremely important when you count all the components that add delay to a system. Uh, it, it's important, and that's why... Um, uh, when I said experience, and you need to sit down with with a counterpart in the media and, and broadcast industry, the engineering team, the production team, because we need everyone on on side to come up with this balance. Mm -hmm. And if you come up with the balance, adopting you know simple basic uh, factors, you know considering all these three simple basic factors, you'll end up come with a very successful solutions. No smoke, no mirrors as if you're exactly inside the stadium. And, and uh, it will, again, one thing, uh, if you can save, uh, you know, a little bit of greenhouse emission, I think we've done our part. That sounds great. So so what challenges remain? What what things do you have to improve to, to get all the broadcasters on board? Is there is it just more reduction of cost and latency, um, an uh, increase of bandwidth, or is it is there something else, some other challenge that you need to overcome? I, I think... Look, I think talking more to, I mean, th this session here is 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 um, will help uh, convince uh, those remaining um, uh, remaining uh, broadcasters that look, uh, you need to consider it. Um, um, the challenges that um, that we faced, you know, a few years back, is no longer there. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the most important one, especially engineers, they at heart, they are they want to evolve, they want a better product. Of course, by heart they want to try, but of course, at the same time, someone uh, else in the medium broadcast is the, the accountants who need to pay the bill. So um, <laughs> when we, uh, so, so it become you know uh, you know a distraction for them, uh, and they say it's too hard. Well, you know, I'm not gonna go through it. I'm gonna know uh, go to what I know. Um, everyone accepted it, even though it's an inferior product, but uh, I better stick with it. If we can convince everyone in the media and broadcasters industry, not the engineers and the broadcasters and, right. and, and, and we need to convince everyone. We need to convince CEOs. We need to convince, uh, of course, uh, who pay the bills, of course, with those customers. And we need to convince them that, ah, you know, the, the, the telco industry is actually as well on board. We have a reliable robot mechanism to do international robot, uh, international mode production without those challenges that actually we you know mm -hmm. uh, inhibited us in the past is no longer there great and that's great. why when i come with the balance act is because i want to convince every those on one 
Um, we need to talk more. We need to communicate. We need to show, um, you know, as I said, before and after. And we need to do a cost comparison. Uh, for the OAAF, we would actually saved them money. So there is a significant savings at the end of the day. But we're not cutting corners here. We are doing something, uh, evolution on the way we do things together. Uh -huh. cool. You only have to go and ask Fox Sport Australia. And, and all they say is why we didn't do this 10 years ago. <laughs> Because yeah, they can do more sport simultaneous, they can fill more channels. Um, to, to them is that means more revenues. At the same time, is for the same amount of money they could do more. But it's not necessary. It's reducing the quality of what they're doing. No, sure. Scale up big, do more channels, put more sports on the screen, more viewers, more viewers, more revenues, uh, and that's why. Uh, they completely changed from the CEO down to the the, the, the cameraman or the engineering. For the uh, remote production within Australia that started, um, they changed the way they do things. Cameraman becomes rigorous as well. They become, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a part of a disaster recovery process as well. And this is uh, the learning that we come through in this journey three years or four years ago, is we need to adapt to the new situation. Uh, now, for example, uh, Australia and, and uh, in particular Australia enjoy one of the first uh, places in the world uh, in the in the uh, in the in the COVID era that uh, now we hold large sports without having significant people uh, or production team to go to the ground because we don't need them. Mm -hmm. um, we can create a, a mini micro bubble that allow those multiple sports. Today, um, I have, you know, flick with the TV, I have six, seven channel live, completely different sporting code watching this. I, I lost channels. So, uh, yes, I'm still being at home, locked. I'm not going to the office, but at the same time, I'm working. Um, as a matter of fact, we're doing this uh, over unmanaged network is, is a proof that uh, the international remote production um, way of doing things these days is with all those certainty mechanism and and uh, efficiencies and, um, and 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 failback mechanism and new way of doing it mm -hmm. is actually a reality and 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 that's uh, I think we need to uh, embrace it. Um, um, we could do more, um, and, and I think I've always mentioned one one example. Let's take a golf tournament for example. Uh, look. You know, you have multiple uh, players. Uh, mm -hmm. In the past, is you know, a production company concentrate on the top two, three players because that's what brings revenues. But I'm as a viewer or as a fan from the fan aspect of things is, uh, I like player X, player Y, but it's not necessarily they are the most, um, you know, high profile player. They're evolving player with the remote production network. You can have a camera or two and every single player. You mm -hmm. can have, um, you know, you, you you can produce more. Bring him back to a remote production app. You don't need to have um, thousands of people to do the producers to, to manage this. You can only have cameras or robot cameras chasing those players. Mm -hmm. Move those cameras to uh, via uh, uh, remote production network to a production app and basically have um, a choice for the fan. I want to see Tiger Woods. I can see every single shot from Tiger Woods, not a selection of shots golf, you know, in the mm -hmm. golf, uh, in golf terms, uh, that's selected by producers. No, I want to follow. I'm a fan and I am tragic in golf, for example. I want to see every single one. So it allows, from the fan experience perspective, it allows, but it's not necessary. Um, um, you, you know, you're paying more for it. NBC in the U.S., I think they're doing this more often right. in the U.S. Yep. Yep, yep. And, no, it's, and, it's, uh... and what we need is the, the only sticking point is how I can get more of those, um, you know, angles and visions and every single mm -hmm. word to the consumer at home. And that's the key now challenge that we need to go through. Sounds fascinating. Well, I can tell you're really passionate about this. And, and I thank you so much for spending time with me today. And uh, really glad that uh, you had a chance to, uh, you know, show everybody just how much uh, this is a reality. Thanks so much. Um, we'll uh, we'll get this uh, posted soon, and um, really appreciate all your time. Thanks. I really this was great. Thank you.